Hello friends, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make drum beats in Logic, and not only that, but also how you can add some human feel to those drum beats when you're making music on a computer. So, should be fun, let's get started. So, we learned in the last video how to start, how to make a software instrument track. The piano was the default. Now, I want to talk about drums more, so... Got drum kit, electronic drum kit over here. I'm gonna start with an acoustic kit. I'll go with Bluebird. It's a good one. And I'm, I'll do all this on musical typing just so anyone, if you don't have a MIDI keyboard, you don't have to be left out. Press Command K. All right. And then again, tempo is up here. So we can go five beats per minute, which I don't think we want to do that. I'll go with that. Okay, so that was a little off in the beginning, right? Just click that, press the letter Q, I don't know if you could see that move a little bit, but it did. Uh, but I am going to just adjust it a little bit. Like right here. And then line these MIDI notes up with the region at the end, or the beginning. I'm going to crank it up a little bit. Sounds groovy. They're all yellow. Because again, I'm using musical typing that doesn't register velocity. But if you wanted to go through, you could make these a little louder, make this one a little softer, make this a little louder, this a little louder, you know, whatever, whatever you want. And then we can also swing it. I don't know why the beginning of that sounds. It's this hi hat. Okay, but now we turn the metronome off. I like doing the drums first, so I don't need the metronome anymore. So that's a groovy little beat to start with. I'm going to add a new track. I'm going to add some shakers. So you can browse through the all these different folders, uh, or you can just search shaker. And you'll find lots of choices. Um... Command K, musical typing, ouch. Do a different one. Which one do I like? Go up. I like this one. Okay, that's cool, but it also can be, it could be cooler. So, over here, I'm going to, uh, I like to add stereo delay, so when we click on that, um, oops. so now you have the cool bouncy effect, and you can adjust, you know, which side is, you know, which uh, left or right is playing what notes. Uh, and then you can also move it just a little bit if you want to make the timing a little bit off. And you can make it like swing it by doing that. Uh, and then cross feed. So this will send the right side, those 16ths, to the left. Same thing for the other side. I like to do dotted eighths. Something like that. Okay, so I'm going to add, and you don't have to play a lot. That's the coolest thing. Like, I'm just, uh, I'm just hitting that J, and that's it. So I'm going to record and just play some random stuff. All right. Okay, I'm going to press Q. And then you can adjust whatever you want down here, so I can make... 
That's pretty cool. You can change the length, so that'll make them really short. Tone will make it pop a little more. Uh, width, uh, will... I like it. What's the best way to explain that? Um, comes to both sides more, I guess. Instead of, it's more stereo than mono. There you go. High cut, um, makes it hard to hear. There you go. Gets, lowers the higher frequencies. And then if you wanted to, um, this, I wasn't really gonna talk about this, but the, just so you know, you, some, one thing you can do while you're recording, you can record yourself adjusting these knobs and the DAW will register that. So let's say I wanna have fun with the panning, which is pretty fun actually. Let's press record. Right, left, right, left, okay. And then you can see there that um, the panning knob up there is, is turning. It's having a good old time. All right, so that's only two tracks and we're using computers to make it, but it's it's got some soul. I also like to add a little bit of reverb to the kit. Uh, so you'll come over here after you click on that. Um, this list, like where it says channel EQ and compressor, these are your um, like uh, or you'll find all the effects that you can add to tracks. So I'm going to scroll to reverb. Wait, that's not reverb. And then I like silver verb myself. Uh, 70s a little. You can have fun with it. I don't like to overdo it, but just enough to make it feel less stale. Yeah, and the shaker's going crazy, so nice. Another thing you can do to make it more natural if you want, especially if you're not a drummer and you don't want to do a bunch of musical typing and actually playing beats, you can write all these notes in. So if I uh, right-click over here and say create MIDI region, that'll pop up. Double-click on that. We'll scroll over. Um, I don't usually do this, but, um, so I might not be given the most efficient way, but you would, you can press this button here, pencil tool, find your things, so like there's our kick, we would move over, wait, yeah, and you can draw notes in like that. Let's see how that sounds. And now let's loop that. And now let's crank the tempo up. Nice. Okay. I should have saved that. Oh, I could. I don't want that. Uh, let's see. What else? Oh yeah. That is totally not what I was about to talk about. What I was going to talk about is uh, adding ghost notes and stuff. So, let's go back to this beat. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> okay, so when you have musical typing up, find your snare. So, here's our loud snare, here's like, what, softer snare. I don't know what they actually call that, but it's like snare. On the keyboard, it's snare one and wait. Snare edge. Okay, center. Okay. Oh, that's a rim shot. Okay, I thought that was just regular snare. They're snares, so who cares? But using this uh, snare, the serif center is better for ghost notes. So, okay, I didn't even say what I was about to do. What you can do is um, just kind of like lightly tap on that as you're recording here and there. So, two, three. Yeah. 
So now let's click on that region. So my timing is probably pretty off with that. We'll go back to pointer tool, pointer tool. We can select all of these and we can quantize them so we can mess with the strength again if we want to. Hello. Um, and then lower the velocity since they are ghost notes. And you can, of course, in edit individual ones if you want. So, and then if you do want to throw some quick notes in there, instead of doing the pencil tool thing, you can just right click on random spots. This part, this way is a little easier than what I just showed you guys, but I think that's how a lot of people do it, is using the pencil tool. But I just right click and press create note. I don't know. Yeah, clap, why not? I kinda like that clap, actually, I'm not gonna lie. Wait, where to go? Yeah, let's crank that. Turn this up a little bit. And then you can, you know, think dynamically. So if we want a little build up, you can just select a big region or a good chunk of it, lower it, go up a little further, raise it. I didn't really raise it much. And then crank it at the end. Uh, some, well, let's first, let's listen to that. Okay. Sounds like human beings playing. If you have, let's say I select this MIDI region and it shows me a velocity of 24 and I want to raise all of this and I go to velocity and I slide it up and it does not stay at 127, which is the max. The reason it's going back is because it will only go as loud as this, this or the lowest note that you have or the softest note that you have is kind of trapped there like it can all it's not gonna what am i trying to say you might have to go back and adjust you might have to go back and make others individual notes louder so if you ever see this blue guy here then you may need to like turn him up a bit then go back and now you can adjust all of them. Oh, I know why. I don't know. I don't know if I, I don't really need to explain it. The reason why it doesn't really matter, but if you select all these, this red is already at the max, so these can only go up so much and that's why it does that. Okay. There you go. That's good, right? Yeah, we can leave it there and then I'll we'll look at synths next. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully it was a little helpful. And hopefully you're inspired to cook up some computer beats of your own. Uh, and as always, like and subscribe if you're feeling generous. And also, as always, I would very much appreciate it. Uh, so yeah, thanks. I'll see you at the next one, hopefully.